Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's Forensics class. Today we're going to start into looking at Chapter 6, and we're going to look into the idea of fingerprinting. Now, with our notes, while we're working, a couple things that we want to look into is at any point you can pause the video or rewind so that you can get all the information and make sure that we're listening up, not just writing down our information as we're working. But our video notes for this section so that we can continue to work in our lab, we're going to be looking at the history of fingerprinting. We're going to look at our characteristics of fingerprints and those minutiae, the small details are different. How fingerprints are formed, what causes fingerprints to be left on objects, the basic types of fingerprints, and how criminals attempt to alter their fingerprints. Uh, we'll continue in with the reliability of fingerprints and uh, the automated system for identifying fingerprints. Uh, we'll look into how evidence is collected, uh, latest identification techniques, and how to match fingerprints, and how to lift or latent print. So to start us out, a little historical development. The oldest known fingerprints date back to the 3rd century in China. So that was the beginning of the first known fingerprints. Even uh, further back, uh, ancient Babylon uh, was known to actually use fingerprints pressed into, or into clay tablets to mark contracts. So that's something we actually looked at in lab. Earliest study was done by Dr. Neiman. A uh, paper describing patterns he saw in human, uh, in humans under the microscope uh, to show those identical or those identifying ridges. And then Johann Mayer uh, noted that the arrangement of skin ridges was never duplicated in two persons. Uh, probably the first person to actually recognize this fact. Now, continuing on with some history, um, Janet Valjean's Perkin, first one to start grouping fingerprints. Sir William Herschel uh, began to collect fingerprints and noticed that they were not altered by age. Your hands get a little bit larger, but the prints remain the same as you grow older. Burleton uh, looked at identifying prints uh, for repeat offenders for criminals. And then Galton and Henry were the first beginning to develop a classification system that's still used in the United States today. And as we're going, we're going to talk about that idea of the law of seeing how fingerprints can be identified. And so Burlington, remember, first to identify, he used it to see people in prison. And once they got uh, repeat offenders to take those fingerprints so that they knew they were actually keeping track of the correct inmate. Ivan, or Juan Vulicic, uh, improved fingerprint collection, began to look at measurements on the identification cards, uh, all 10 fingerprints impressions, uh, looked at ways of improving those. And then Sir Henry, remember on the last slide, came up with the idea of what we're going to look at is the 10 card and putting all 10 of your fingerprints on the one card for identification system. So just a little bit of our history. Now fingerprints, fingerprints, not just fingers, but our toes, feet, and palms are all covered in small ridges. These ridges, as we're going to call them a lot of times, are friction ridges or dermal ridges are used to help grip objects. And as they're used to grip objects, uh, natural secretions plus dirt um, leave impressions behind or a print on objects we come in contact with. So some of those are going to be oils or amino acids, but that's what's left behind that we see as our fingerprints. Now, when our fingerprints were actually formed, um, animal tissue has an inner and an outer layer, so our dermis and our epidermis. Now, when our, our, when our, our fingerprints were first starting to be created, that basal layer, the new skins are being produced in the dermis. Now, at about uh, fingerprints form at about the beginning of that tenth week of infancy or pregnancy. So way before you're born, your fingerprints are actually formed. And it's caused that basal layer grows faster than the other layers. And as they form faster, the layers kind of collapse upon each other, forming these intricate shapes. Now, since they're formed at about the tenth week of pregnancy, even identical twins have different fingerprints. So it makes it even a more unique way to identify fingerprints. 
Now, our fingerprints are individual evidence. So far, characters who know two people have been found to have the exact same fingerprint pattern. They have been very similar, but not exact. Fingerprint matter, our pattern will remain unchanged for the life of an individual. However, uh, permanent scars and skin diseases can change or alter it slightly, but the fingerprints always kind of grow back. Uh, those ridge patterns are what we're going to use to systematically identify somebody's fingerprints. And this will conclude our first part of our chapter notes on fingerprinting.